Okay, welcome to uh, securing and scaling Drupal with Kubernetes. Uh, this is a panel of uh, a few folks here. Uh, so I'll just start by uh, introducing our panelists um, and then uh, introducing our sponsors. So first is uh, Jeremy. Jeremy is a development manager with uh, Doghouse Agency and a technical architect for District CMS. Uh, he's been developing and tinkering with Drupal and everything related for over a decade. Uh, he's a mentor uh, and he's a big fan of open source, uh, contributed on many open source projects, including Cody. Uh, where he designed and developed uh, the applications, web interface, the logo, and public website. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, there is uh, Scott. Uh, you know he's a real developer because uh, his entire profile is in dark mode. Uh, <laughs> so, so Scott's uh, with uh, Systems Engineer with Amazie, where he uh, works with a global team of Kubernetes-based open source hosting platform, uh, Lagoon. Uh, his background is in Unix system software development and administration with a focus on uh, GNU Linux containers and Kubernetes. So welcome, Scott. And next we have uh, Nick. Hello, Nick. Nick is the operations lead at Previous Next an architect for the cloud hosting platform Skipper. Uh, he's passionate about technology, developer with uh, deep knowledge of running Drupal on cloud native infrastructure. So welcome, Nick. And you're the, uh, you're the DevOps uh, lead, uh, the track lead for this uh, conference as well. I am, yes. Yeah, yep. uh, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's been a long uh, And finally, yeah, and uh, finally about me, I am uh, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, DevPanel. It's a control panel like uh, Pantheon, Acquia, and the like, that runs all the sites in your AWS account. Um, I'm also an ambassador with uh, CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Uh, and I also run the Drupal Ops uh, Meetup. Uh, you can you can sign up there. Um, okay, now about our sponsors, uh, District CMS. So uh, I just want to do a quick uh, uh, poll of how many people uh, know of District CMS. So if you can do a quick, uh, if you can respond to how many people know of District CMS already, that'll give us a give us an idea of how many people know of it. So we can. Okay, so so it looks like a third of the people know about it. Uh, I'll end the poll and show the results. Okay, so great. So about District CMS, uh, we have Jez here from District CMS. So Jez, you wanna give us a little back, a little uh, slides worth of intro on District CMS? Yeah, absolutely. So um, in a nutshell, um, District is uh, a council focused, local council focused distribution of uh, Drupal. So. Um, very similar to GovCMS, but more tailored towards um, local council. You know, we're sort of trying to pull in all the, the things that councils are going to need, um, including hosting, uh, which we'll talk about more, but um, also integrations um, and sort of common requirements and administrative tools. Um, so just trying to <clears throat> help out councils by providing them uh, a platform which is is ready to go essentially out of the box for them. Okay, that's about it in a nutshell. Very good, thank you. Um, 
All right, I'm going to stop my screen share so we can all just talk uh, freely here. Um, OK, so I, I'm just going to go around and uh, ask you guys about uh, Kubernetes and you guys are going to be doing most of the talking. So uh, uh, Jez, first of all, uh, I know you guys are running uh, district CMS is a, is a pretty nice distribution. I, I've seen it and uh, you wanna you wanna talk about uh, why you guys are running it on? Uh, like, first of all, what is your what is your experience with uh, Kubernetes, and uh, and why you chose Kubernetes for it? So, uh, well, my experience is um, very much been sort of tinkering with it at this stage. Um, I've uh, done a lot of playing around with Docker in the past, and. Um, but anyone who's uh, dealt with web development in the last few years knows that that's pretty much the, the way to go for all aspects of um, development, CI and um, production. Um, and uh, yeah, I suppose we wanted something which um, is sort of high available, has high availability, um, is, um, can withstand basically anything that's thrown at it, um, can auto scale and repair itself, um, and basically compete with um, the best out there. So um, Kubernetes sort of ticks all of those boxes and um, it, it works very well with Drupal. In it. Um, so it's kind of why sort of we've been sort of going in that direction, um, essentially wanted just to compete with, uh, yeah, the best out there and uh, provide a, a robust solution. So. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna do. A, I'm gonna fire up another quick poll just to see how many people actually know about Kubernetes. So, if you guys can click a, just a quick yes or no of if you guys know of Kubernetes, so we can actually talk about or go into details. And and while you're taking a poll. Uh, uh, do you want to, Scott, do you want to tell us a quick, uh, give us a quick intro on Kubernetes? Sure. Um, so, I mean, I guess. You guys do all the hosting using Kubernetes, Yeah, we right? do. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess we, I mean, uh, there have been a few talks already um, that I've seen so far, people talking about containers, all the advantages you get with those, you know, the sort of um, the dependency management and portability and the fact that there's less overhead than a, a VM. Um, but I guess getting that into production is the difficult bit. Because I mean, it's, it's so easy to spin up Docker on your laptop and get something running. But then, you know, how do you make this sort of really robust? And that's where Kubernetes kind of um, comes in um, and really provides that kind of platform for doing the orchestration, helps automate sort of operations and all those sort of um, day two kind of uh, production um, operational aspects. Um, yeah, it really provides just that level of reliability and that um, ability to just get containers, yeah, off your laptop and into production. Yeah, well, a lot of folks here know, already know of Kubernetes, but it's a, uh, uh, it, it's, it allows you to to run containers at scale, uh, so so basically it's uh, uh, it'll take Docker containers and and it, it'll allow us to take those and run those on essentially on any cloud provider, um, or or even on your laptops or and things like that. So, is that that level of that type of a technology, um, and and uh, so so. And and Scott, you're you're with you're with Amazy. Just I just want to clarify that. So that's right. Yeah, um, yeah. So uh, okay. So uh, Nick, you wanna you wanna jump in and tell us like what is your experience with uh, with Kubernetes and how you guys use it? Yeah, for sure. Um, I might pull it a thread that Jeremy put down just before around. Um, 
competing with the big boys, like that kind of statement, or the bigger, the bigger clouds. Like um, Kubernetes is a is a like applications platform, applications management platform, um, and the APIs that it provides. It provides you everything from deployments to routing traffic to running background tasks to providing storage and then it even has an extension mechanism so then you can make those apis look integrated into kubernetes as well so like give me a database or give me a, an smtp backend um it, it really has raised the playing field when it comes to this and raised the bar we're not just um, working off VMs anymore, and we're using these APIs to deploy our applications. Um, and that really shines with agencies, um, like like a lot of us. Um, we started off with, just like us, we started off with a lot of sites, and they were running on VMs, and um, it was very hard to provide HA capabilities. So, and then Kubernetes comes into the picture, and gives us not only APIs for managing that fleet of, of applications, but then it also allows us to then provide H, like a, a smaller footprint for HA capabilities or auto scale. Capabilities. When you say so, HA, so, I just want to clarify what HA is. Yeah. When um, you say HA, I just want to clarify HA. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, highly available. What, what is HA? You want to yep. like HA? I don't know if everybody knows HA, yep. so I just want to clarify that HA is High availability. So yeah, just, high, ava high yeah. availability infrastructure. So, um, yeah. so if we go yeah. back to my um, analogy, we had sites on single VMs. So that was a very standard way, low budget way to host folks' sites. But um, if that virtual machine goes down, then it has to be nurtured and brought back up. Um, what Kubernetes does is takes all those machines and makes it one big computer, and then. It means if that site goes down, it can get migrated to the next and the next. So, um, so giving you a higher availability for your application. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, yeah, I think a lot of these things, like a lot of these APIs, have really raised the bar and and allowed folks to build their own bespoke clouds or build their own tools on top of it. Um, where, where it would yeah. have been a very sizable investment from cloud providers in the past. Yeah. Uh, Jez, from, from your perspective, from a, from a distribution provider perspective, what, what do you see the benefits that Kubernetes brings to you and specifically to your customers? Um, I suppose one of the big things is um, due to containerization is being able to have a consistent underlying application which can then be modified um, per customer and that means that uh, we can easily deploy updates and test updates um, across uh, a, a vast range of um, different clients um, so uh, <clears throat> I guess every every site is going to be extending uh, a core sort of image which we're able to thoroughly test and, and update as required and not just update the application but also essentially update the infrastructure so um, update versions of PHP and everything else um, and then have confidence I suppose when you're rolling that out that uh, you're not having to um, do as much there's, there's not the overhead of having to um, deal with individual operating systems and um, individual code bases because you're, you're kind of extending this base platform. So it benefits, I suppose, the, the people, the customers using it um, with sort of less costs involved with maintenance. Uh, it benefits our developers as well with um, the, the less effort that's required. Um, and it benefits the application by sort of making it more robust. So that's probably one of the, the key things I think for us. Um, but uh, of course, there's the other things that, that were mentioned as well is like, you, know, you never want the, the site to sort of um, go down or have any sort of availability issues. So that's another thing I suppose Kubernetes is bringing in. It's, um, yeah, no matter what quantity of traffic is hitting that site, um, it's just going to automatically scale and handle um, whatever gets thrown at it. 
So it's not just scaling up, it's also scaling down, yeah. right? So it's also, there's also cost benefit. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. So uh, yeah, rather than having, um, I suppose, in traditional where, where you've got VMs or even just bare metal, um, it's a very ineffective way of utilizing hardware. You're kind of slicing it up into certain sizes. And even if those, um, the application isn't using all of that, those resources, um, it's still sort of put aside. Whereas <clears throat> with Kubernetes, uh, very much like how it's um, using, only using what it needs to, and like you say, um, yeah, it'll scale down, freeing up resources, um, and scale up only when it needs to. Yeah. Yeah. In the traditional, I think in the traditional, uh, hosting environments uh, with the vms and stuff you always have to have enough vms to to accommodate all your your maximum spikes right uh and versus kubernetes so so and 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 i think that's that's a that's a good benefit uh from from that perspective that kubernetes can bring not just to the application the scalability but also to the customers for the for the cost savings um, you, you had also, when we were talking earlier, you had also mentioned uh, security aspects of it. So uh, from a security aspect, can you talk about like, what, what do you see Kubernetes bringing to the table from a security perspective? Um, I suppose this sort of goes to a bit to Docker's features, but the, the fact that you're dealing with a, um, uh, essentially a read only, um, platform um, with only certain parts of it um, exposes the read write. So that <clears throat> provides a, a, a bit of security in itself. Um, and also, like I mentioned before, the ability to um, deploy security, um, not just sort of application updates, but security updates, whether it be at the um, operating system level or in the application. Um, sort of easily and rapidly and being able to sort of wrap some good tests into that as well to make sure that um, you're, you're constantly sort of up to date and um, even, yeah, having that sort of automated so you've got sort of security tests running sort of um, each night or something like that, uh, which could be benefiting potentially hundreds of customers um, is really good. So it's something which you can't really do with without containers or Kubernetes. And yeah, I want to encourage the folks that are here to ask questions. So uh, please go ahead and put in your questions so we can get to those too. Go ahead, Scott. Thanks. I was just going to add just on the security uh, aspect from an operational point of view, Kubernetes has a really robust uh, role-based access control framework that um, it's built on, um, which really is a powerful abstraction that allows you to do um, so really, like really lock down um, what people, the sort of uh, actions that containers and things can take on the platform. Um, so it's not just sort of from a, um, a, a developer's point of view, but also from the operational side. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, we've got uh, 50 seconds so, left. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the time goes by really fast. Mm. Okay. Um, I'll All right. Go. <laughs> go ahead, Matt. Oh, I, I just wanted to, like, one observation with this whole conference around and tying into scale is product. Um, like, Vic DPC with their um, distribution, like Titan Ripple, um, GovCMS with its distribution, and then here also a district CMS and its distribution. Like, the, the common underlying thread for this is that they're products and they're being carved out and deployed. Um, so, I'm sure that. Kubernetes is, like you've said, very integral and the ability to be able to not just scale with requests, but scale with carving out sites and carving out that repeatable product over and over again for different different users, different, yeah, different clients. Yeah, and, and all the platforms, including GovCMS, they're all running on Kubernetes. So it's a it's a it's a solid platform to build on. So okay, well with that. Uh, I want to, the, the time went by really fast. <laughs> With that, I want to thank you all. Um, and uh, hopefully the, the folks here learned something about Kubernetes and, uh, and 
and uh, feel free to reach out to the panelists uh, if you if you have uh, questions. So thank you all. Take care. Thanks. Bye.